When a track is not analyzed correctly by Recordbox, you want to change that. And you can change that by editing the beat grid. I have a track here that is analyzed horribly wrong by Recordbox. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, make sure therefore you are in the export mode. Yes. And then in the export mode, go to grid, then load the track. That was wrong. And the easiest way to detect if a track is wrong is by enabling the metronome. By clicking on the grid, we enabled this panel over here. And over here is the metronome. So when I click on the metronome, I can play the track and you can hear a beeping sound. And you can hear that it is off. It's on the off beat. When the volume of the metronome is too loud, you can click on this button over here and then the volume is lower. And you can increase it by clicking again and decrease it again by clicking again. There are a couple of things wrong with this track, but the easiest way is to start with finding the first beat of the bar and placing it in the right position. The easiest way is to pick a part in the track that has a lot of difference in volume because that makes it easier to see visually what is going on. For example, over here, it's going from quiet to loud. And we can see by looking at the blue that here the kick is starting. These are the hi-hats. So I'm going to guess that the first beat of the bar is over here. This is your cursor. This is where the track currently is. So I place the track at that point by grabbing the waveform and I put it over here. Now, how do I set it as the first beat of the bar? By clicking on this button over here with a white red line. And now you'll see that it will change for the whole track, the first beat of the bar. But just by looking at the beat grid, I can already see that that is not correctly. But let's check it. Yeah, it's too early. And why I was thrown off by this over here, but the actual beat is over here. So let's change that. And this looks already a lot better. Yeah, that fixed the problem. In this case it did, but not always. When it doesn't fix the problem, it is easier to reanalyze the track. When you analyze the track by default, it is statically analyzed, but you can try to analyze the track dynamically. You can do that by clicking on this button over here and then click on analyze track dynamic. Now it's going to reanalyze the track. And now let's see if that would have fixed the problem if our first beat of the bar didn't fix the problem. Yep. The best way is to jump to certain parts of the track to check if not only the first part is correct, but also the parts that are a little bit later in the track. Okay, in this case, it would have fixed the problem, but often it wouldn't. So we need to do that by hand, manually. Over here is an option to set the BPM of the track. Now it's set to 124 BPM, but um, when it is analyzed, it could have been 123.5, for example. Then you'll notice that the, the analyzed track is slower than the track really is. And when you download a track from Bport, for example, it shows the BPM, and that can also fix the problem just by entering the right BPM. 
But when you don't know the BPM, there is a thing you can do and you can tap in the tempo manually. So let's uh, go to over here, for example, and then let's play the track. And then over here, you see a tap button. And when that is enabled, when I press play. And by clicking on the tap button, it starts to adjust the track. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, one, two, three. Maybe it's easier with the metronome off. Dum, dum, dum. Dum, dum, dum. Dum, dum, dum. And you'll see that I slowly get to the right BPM. And just a little trick, when it says 123.87 BPM, the BPM is probably 124 BPM. And nowadays tracks are produced in a DAW that is always on the exact beat of the bar. Not for analog music, but when it's produced in a DAW, uh, it's always the fixed BPM around a BPM. So it's either 125 BPM or 126, or in this case, 124 BPM. Now let's check with the metronome if it's correct. Yes, it is. But let's say it isn't and it is too late. So let's say it uh, would detect the first beat of the bar over here. Now it is too early and we want to shift the whole beat grid to the right. We can do that by clicking on this button or this button. And this button shifts the whole beat grid to the left, and this button shifts the whole beat grid to the right. In this case, I need to sh shift it to the right. So I click on this button a couple of times, and then you'll see it will shift the beat grid to the right. These changes are very small and very minimal. When you are zoomed out of the waveform, it's really hard to see those changes. So I would recommend to zoom in for editing the beat grid because it's easier to see what is going on. You can zoom in and out by Clicking on these buttons over here, uh, this button is zooming in and this button is zooming out. You can click on that a couple of times. You can also use your mouse cursor for zooming in. Oh, you need to hover over the beat grid, zooming in and out with the scroll wheel on your mouse. And now I can see when I'm zoomed in, I'm a little bit off grid because it is placed to the right. So let's shift it to the left. Now this is probably the right place. It could be that a track is detected too fast or too slow, and therefore you can expand the beat intervals or shrink the beat intervals. And you can do that with these two buttons over here. With this button, I expand the beat interval, meaning that those lines will go wider. In other words, the track is recognized slower than the track really is. So the track is actually faster. And the same thing in reverse, I can shrink the beat intervals by clicking on this button over here. Recordbox has the tendency to recognize tracks twice the speed or half the speed. So in this case, it's now 124 BPM, but Recordbox has the tendency to recognize tracks, for example, as 248 BPM. There are two buttons to correct that. And you can click on times two to increase the BPM. Now it's 248 and you can click here to half the BPM and now it's 124 and it's it's really it's really funny just for shows now it's too quick and now it's on the right tempo the changes that I do now apply to the whole track but there is a way to change tempo for example throughout the track so the changes that you do, you don't want to apply those to the whole track. You won't only want to apply that to a part of the track. You can do that by these two buttons. For example, I can go over here in the track and this is the first beat of the bar over here and the first bar of that section of the song. And now changes are applied to the whole track. So when I go right, everything is going to the right. And when I go left, everything is applied to 
the whole track. I can click over here and now only the changes that I do over here are applied to the rest of the track. So you can't say I only want to, to change, uh, if this is the whole track, only change one part of the track. No, you can't do that. You can only change from that point in the track. When I shift the whole beat grid to the right, you will notice that only the parts after the where the cursor is are changed to the right and the rest, you can see that by those white lines, dots over here, triangles, that those stay in place. So when I click here a couple of times, you can see that only the changes are applied to the right part of the track. However, this applies to shrink beat intervals and expand beat intervals and double the track speed and half the track speed but it doesn't apply to the first beat of the bar and that is a little bit annoying because when i set the first beat of the bar you will notice that the rest will change too so when i set it to the first beat of the bar over here click you will see that the first beat of the bar is changed because now over here i have three white lines and one red and when i set it to let's say over here I have only two whites and one red. So something to bear in mind. If I did something stupid, I can undo that. And I can do that, do undo by clicking on the undo button over here. So I click over here to undo and I click over here to redo the change that I just did. Now let's say I have changed my track. I've put five to 10 minutes to edit this track. I don't want to accidentally change that by clicking on analyzing or reanalyzing the track again. So I can make sure that this track is safe for reanalyzing and I can do that by lock the track by clicking on this lock over here. And now I am not able to analyze the track. 